Okay, good evening, everybody. We will be uh, having a case discussion today on anesthesia management in a pregnant patient with mitral stenosis who's posted for um, cesarean section. So, Dr. Vignesh will be presenting the case and uh, then we will be discussing. So, for the initial 15 to 20 minutes, we will be talking on the uh, pathophysiology of MS and um, basically the medicine part. And the remaining 15 20 minutes, we'll talk about the anesthesia management. So, I think we can start. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Vignesh, you can start the case. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, my patient, like Mrs. Swati, 33 year old uh, female. Switch on, switch on your video. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Vignesh. Yes. Huh. Now you can start. Huh. Uh, so, my patient, slides are not moving actually. My patient, a uh, 33-year-old female um, with a education qualification till 12th standard, like a resident of Jahangir Puri. Uh, she is a Gravida 3, Para 2, Live 1, Abortion 1, currently with 9 months of amenorrhea. Uh, that is 36 weeks plus 5, five days, uh, weeks of gestation. And um, uh, with compliance of leaking PV for the past two hours and has been admitted for safe confinement. Uh, safe confinement. And uh, she had presented uh, four months ago with the compliance of breathing and cough for one week. Um, and uh, her current pregnancy was a spontaneous conception and booked at nearby PHC. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no excessive vomiting, no bleeding PV, no burning maturation, and no fever with rash. And um, she felt quickening uh, at 18 weeks. And uh, she's able to do all her daily activities and no issue of any headache, blurring of vision, and abdominal pain. And uh, she pursues normal fetal movements. And uh, four months ago, she developed breathlessness over one week, which was insidious in onset. And... Uh, gradually progressive in nature and initially when uh, she had breathlessness only during exertion that is during uh, climbing stars and during uh, strenuous activities and later like uh, it got progress yeah, progressing to even at rest she was having breathlessness and uh, breathlessness got like, aggravated while lying down and got relieved in sitting position and uh, she also had a cough for one week at the time and not associated with any fever or sputum production and um, it got aggravated on lying down and relieved by sitting position that time she had a history of breathlessness on lying down flat. So she used uh, two pillows while lying down. And uh, there was a history of uh, swelling of both the lower limbs and extending up to the ankles, which was relieved by rest, which was reduced by rest. And uh, no issue of any chest pain, palpitations, loss of consciousness at that time, and no issue of abdominal pain or loss of appetite, and no issue of cough or blood uh, in sputum, and no issue of uh, bluish discoloration of fingers or toes, and uh, no issue of any frequent hospitalization for respiratory illnesses. And uh, coming to the presenting illness, like uh, um, uh, like she was evaluated that time, she was evaluated in the cardiology, uh, diagnosed to have a severe uh, heart disease at the time, and uh, she underwent a procedure in the cath lab. Her symptoms re resolved uh, over a period of two days, and uh, like um, there was no history of any ICU stay or mechanical ventilation, and she got discharged after two days. And uh, in the past, like seven years before, also she had a, a similar episode. Uh, like that time she had uh, palpitations and synco and was taken to emergency and, uh, and that time itself she uh, was diagnosed with a heart disease and uh, she underwent a procedure uh, in the cath lab uh, following which like her symptoms got resolved over three days and that time also she was not admitted on any uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, ICU and no issue of any mechanical ventilation and she was prescribed uh, cardiac medications and uh, injection once every three weeks that time itself. And uh, she doesn't have any other comorbidities and uh, no history of any fever or joint pain or um, swelling in the in the childhood and uh, no history of any recurrent sore throat in the childhood. And past surgical history, uh, there is no history of any major surgeries in the past and uh, post obstetric history. Uh, she had a normal vaginal, full term non normal vaginal delivery uh, five years ago and um, no history of any symptoms suggestive of uh, cardiac illnesses at the, uh, uh, during that pregnancy and uh, history of spontaneous abortion uh, in first trimester three years ago happened. And uh, coming to treatment history, currently uh, uh, the patient is on uh, metaprolol uh, um, 25 mg OD and then torzimide 10 mg OD and uh, she is on uh, citrom uh, 2 mg OD and uh, it, uh, it was stopped. Like uh, She got admitted for a safe confinement one week before uh, in ward. So like uh, the acetrom was stopped uh, four days before. And uh, she was switched to injection uh, low molecular weight heparin for the MG subcutaneous PD. And uh, she's uh, taking a uh, tablet ecosprin, 75 MG inhibitors, and uh, injection penicillin 1.2 million units once in every three weeks. 
and there is no known uh, drug allergy and um, menstrual history like uh, she had uh, menarche at 12 years and uh, she had uh, she was having a regular cycles and the lmp was a uh, uh, 12 12 2023 and the uh, personal history she was uh, uh, she studied uh, she was also uh, studied till 12 standard and no history of any addictions consumes mixed diet and uh, has a uh, normal bowel and blood, uh, bladder habit and uh, no history of any heart diseases in the rest of the family members uh, so my provisional diagnosis is a uh, gravida 3 para 2 uh, live one abortion one pregnant lady at 36 plus 5 uh, 36 weeks plus 5 days of gestation a known case of rheumatic valvular disease with no signs of uh, active heart failure has been admitted for uh, safe confinement okay Vignesh, uh, so far from the history what are your positive findings uh, ma'am uh, she is a known case of rheumatic heart disease and uh, had an episode of breathlessness and uh, cough that time. And uh, she underwent a episode, uh, I mean, uh, she underwent a um, balloon wall, mitral valvotomy. And uh, currently, she is uh, not having any cardiac symptoms and has been um, admitted for safe confinement. Oh, okay. Consider that this patient um, doesn't have any history papers. She doesn't have any papers uh, related to her previous admission. And um, she is not that educated, and she cannot actually tell you that what procedure she underwent. So okay, uh, let's forget for a moment that she has rheumatic heart disease. She is a known case. So okay, uh, just based on the history, what do you think that what are her positive findings? So what, what uh, are the positive uh, uh, symptoms on? Mom, cough with uh, breathlessness. Breathlessness, uh, it is new on exertion uh, the patient had, ma'am. So that right. might, that. Okay. And, Anything uh, else? Cough. She also has cough, cough. right? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, based on only these two symptoms, breathlessness and cough, it could be either a cardiac or a respiratory. Uh, yes, ma'am. Calls. We do not know what it is. Uh, the um, anything specific that is pointing towards cardiac in this positive history of this patient. Um, this patient also had a. Uh... The, the, it was not associated with any sputum production or any other uh, I, this thing, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So, Vignesh, my question was that is there any positive history in this patient which is pointing towards the diagnosis of a cardiac disease? Apart from um, the patient uh, doesn't have any other um, sputum production or any other thing, so which which might uh, uh, be a fever with sputum production, which might be suggest, suggest of any pneumonia or any other no. respiratory cause. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and the patient had a history of uh, lower limb swelling, ma'am. And uh, no, the lower limb swelling can be a sign of pregnancy also, right? Oh, okay. So uh, the most important finding that in this patient, uh, which points towards cardiac, is orthopnea. Uh, yeah, orthopnea and the PND right? patient. Right? Yes, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's okay. So uh, orthopnea, can you tell me why it happens? Um, orthopnea, basically it happens like uh, uh, all these uh, um, like... Uh, if they, if one depends, uh, like orthopnea is basically the patient develop breathlessness while uh, lying supine, and uh, it is because yes. of uh, increased uh, venous return, like uh, leading to a pulmonary congestion. The pulmonary uh, the pulmonary vascular vasculature is already non-compliant uh, since uh, like because of uh, chronic uh, increased uh, pulmonary um, blood flow or increased pulmonary venous congestion. Mm -hmm. So like uh, these patients right. develop. Uh, uh, this thing, uh, right, right. So it thing. Could, uh, right, right. So it could be um, mainly because of probably because of LV failure, something which has caused uh, an increase in the um, LV pressures leading to the transmission of the increased backward transmission of the pressures to the left atrium and then finally to the pulmonary vasculature leading to orthopnea. So orthopnea is a very, um, uh, it's a positive fact of, uh, uh, in this patient. What about PND? This patient doesn't have PND, but what do you mean by PND? On PND, usually uh, it happens in the night, like when the patient likes, uh, uh, when the patient goes for sleep, like patient will be sleeping yeah, for like. It can happen in the daytime uh, also. It depends upon how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, ma'am. So like when the patient lies, so uh, huh. lies, uh, when the patient sleeps for like two to three hours, like uh, the sympathetic mm -hmm. discharge will be reduced, and then like uh, uh, the again like increased venous return will also be there.